Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. It's Christmas Day 2019, and tomorrow, the 26th of December, uh, we'll be able to see a solar eclipse from here in Phuket at around noon local time, which is about 5 a.m. UTC. Uh, so I do hope to do a live broadcast of the eclipse. I hope you can join me for that. It should be quite spectacular. As you can see from this map on timeanddate.com, Phuket in southern Thailand is just north of the central shadow that will be cast by this sun-moon alignment. So I want to address a couple of things in this precursory video before tomorrow's live coverage of the solar eclipse. First of all, we have uh, often this claim from anti-flat earthers or proponents of the globe and the heliocentric model that the heliocentric model is the only way that you can predict eclipses. This is an outright lie, basically, and it's quite ignorant because uh, throughout the history of tracking the sun and the moon uh, to make these predictions for whether it's been hundreds or thousands of years, no one has ever had to assume that we're on a globe. They've never had to assume the size, dimensions or the shape uh, of the earth or the, the movement of the earth. Um, it is simply done by making observations throughout the year uh, and where you can then uh, see quite clearly when the paths of the sun and the moon will cross. That's all anyone has ever done. No one throughout history has ever had to assume that we're on a globe. In fact, the only reason we have to assume or perceive that we live on a globe is because we have had this decision to put us in a heliocentric model, which I've explained in an earlier video is due to what I believe is the introduction of the Gregorian calendar, a solar calendar. So with that solar calendar, we have a heliocentric model pushed out at around the same time um, in the uh, 1500s. And because of this decision to put the sun at the center of this timekeeping method or this model, we are forced to perceive the Earth as a rotating globe. It's the only way that you can uh, justify night and day in a heliocentric model. You have to have a rotating spherical Earth for night and day to occur. But uh, on a level stationary Earth, night and day can occur just as easily, and you can also just as easily predict eclipses. Eclipses are certainly not exclusive to any model. It's, in fact, it is the predictive nature of these observations, knowing when and where we will see these events occur, that allows math magicians to create any model they like. The model really is, is, is just that, is just um, making these ob earthbound observations and knowing the time, the place and the lo location that uh, these celestial events will occur. That's it, that's the model. Uh, and how you want to perceive that or illustrate that is, is really up to you. Um, the, the Earth can be moving, the Earth can be stationary, the Sun can be moving along with the Moon. And what we do in fact see with the Moon is the same as we see with the Sun. We see the Sun go overhead every day and we see the Moon go overhead every day, except for a few days in the month when we have the new Moon. And this is at this time when the Moon is uh, very closely aligned to the Sun. Uh, so what I've done is uh, I've taken screenshots of every day at noon from Phuket, or Phuket time, uh, from the 26th of November uh, leading up to the 26th of December. So this will give us an idea of the path that the Moon takes in order to meet uh, this alignment with the Sun. And we'll see how easy it is then to predict uh, when the eclipse will occur. And it doesn't have, to, again, it doesn't have to have any uh, bearing on the assumed size or shape or movement of the Earth. Uh, so another thing to keep in mind here is that uh, what we'll see is the Sun and the Moon get farther and farther apart. And with a, a level Earth model with the Sun and the Moon uh, doing orbits, all we have here is uh, the Moon 
doing a steady pace while the sun does a slightly different pace or a pace that changes throughout the year to give us uh, these uh, uh, different uh, times that the paths of the sun and the moon will cross. Uh, so here we are at uh, on the 26th of November, 12 o'clock uh, Phuket time. And if we go to the 27th, we now see the moon is over here. And, and then we go to the 28th and the 29th. Okay. And uh, the 30th of November. So you can see here that uh, uh, the sun really isn't doing much. It's, it's always going to occur, appear at its zenith uh, at midday in Phuket. Of course, we are telling the time in, in a solar time frame. So that kind of makes sense. The sun is always going to be in that location. And we're not, so, so we're, we're tracking the movements of the moon according to solar time. Uh, but we can see here that as the days go by throughout the month, then the sun and the moon get farther apart. But what's also happening is the moon is moving up to be uh, at its zenith above uh, more northern locations, all right? So as we get up to the, uh, the 11th and the 12th of December, we've got the kind of the peak of this wave that the, the moon is doing before it starts to come down again. So in my mind, this debunks the idea that the moon is uh, in a tidally locked orbit around uh, a spherical Earth, because uh, if it was tidally locked, then it should always be seen in the, in the same point in the sky above any given location throughout the month. But we can see that it's it's changing all the time. Yeah. So we we have we have this uh, uh, now the moon is coming down, and we will see that it's going to now come down and predictably so meet uh, the path of the sun and we have our solar eclipse all right so if i just kind of play this back fast you can see how it does that yeah it's quite quite um easy to see this predictive nature of that now the sun has moved slightly uh, what I've done on this next slide is show uh, the, the path that the, the moon took uh, with these red dots. Uh, so uh, we got where it started here on the 26th of November is, is right here. And then it went to the right here and then came in on the left of this particular illustration here and ended up on the 26th of December right here. So this black spot represents where the the solar eclipse occurs. So you can see that um, this it's kind of taken on this wave form and it's going to follow a slightly different path in January than it did in November to December. So again this is showing us that the, the moon is not tidally locked to the earth. It's going to make these wave patterns uh, but they're going to be slightly different throughout the year. Now what I've also done here is add in um, the sun. So this, this we've got two, two spots where the sun was or is. Um, we've got on the 26th of November the sun was here. So we can see that of course they, the sun and the moon were not aligned. But um, by the 26th of December the sun had moved down to here. Uh, slightly. So while the moon was doing this kind of crazy wave movement, the sun was just uh, occurring, uh, or just moving slightly here. So, you know, we know from, from the seasons that the sun will kind of go between the tropics throughout the year, whereas the moon is going between the tropics throughout a month. Yeah. But again, they, the sun and the moon are going overhead every day. We can quite easily assume that the, the Earth is stationary and the Sun and the Moon are doing their own individual paths above the stationary Earth and that we can also predict that their paths will cross at certain points of time above certain locations on the Earth. 
That is the model. You do not need a heliocentric model uh, to do that. All right. So you can you can make this map a circular map. You can bend it around the poles. You can make it a, a north pole or a south pole uh, azimuthal. It's up to you. It'll always be the same. You still get the predictive nature. Doesn't matter. You can you can illustrate it any way you like. So those globe Earth proponents or the anti flat Earthers that tell you the heliocentric model is the only way that you can predict eclipses are, are lying and they're being ignorant and they are certainly not being scientific in their claims and their assumptions. So I do hope you can join me tomorrow uh, for that. As I said, it's going to be midday for me here in Phuket and that means it's going to be 5, 5 a.m. UTC time. And uh, let's see if we can get some stunning pictures of uh, the sun and the moon lining up. Thank you very much. Click subscribe and the bell icon if you'd like to receive notifications of new videos from Phuket Word.